Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to use Color Effects Pro 4, I think, from the Nick Collection by Google, which is now free. Theme tune. Do 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 Point dance, point dance, ooh, point dance, point dance, point. Because there's a point to everything, I guess was the point of that dance. So anyway, today we're going to be looking at the Color Effects Pro plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. Now essentially, this allows you to do an entire edit on an image um, inside this plugin. It's kind of amazing, but it's also kind of complicated and has some kind of pros and cons with that. So I'll talk through all this while using it today. So let's jump into Lightroom. Oh, if you want to follow, on, follow me on Snapchat, my snap code is here in 321. There it is. So let's jump into Lightroom and Photoshop and show you how this works. So just like all the other tutorials, here we are inside Lightroom. And this is an image we're gonna to use today of Josh Strickland, um, who's actually in a show out here in Vegas. But essentially, if you want to edit here in Lightroom, now let me show you, you go right click, and then you go edit in, and then all you're going to select is Color Effects Pro, and it is number four. Now, I'm not gonna do it in Lightroom, and there is a reason, because I like to show you every single time how to do it in Photoshop. But if you were to do it inside Lightroom, you'd click on that, it would bring up this thing just here. And then all you do is you always want to edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments, that's if you've made any changes in the develop module, and then keep it as a TIFF in my, would be my, um, uh, is what I'd say to do. sRGB is fine, because you're gonna probably be using it on the web and on a screen. If you're gonna go to print, you could go to Pro Photo, but there's no real need to do that in my opinion. And keep it in 16 bits so it keeps as high a quality as possible and compression at none and hit edit. Now, what if you're gonna do it in Photoshop, what you'd actually want to do, that's what I would recommend, because then you can go in and re-edit later on, whereas in Lightroom, once you press edit, it's done. What you would do is you go edit in and then you would just go to open a smart object in Photoshop. And then this is what it would look like. It would come in here and you have a smart object down here. That just means that you can go back into this and you can edit it later on and make any adjustments, which is awesome. Anyway, here we are, and all you have to click is up here, Color Effects Pro 4. You click on that, and it's gonna load it up. And it takes a hot second for it to do that, it analyzes the image, it looks at all, and then it always opens up with a preset kind of already in place, which is this very odd one right here. But what I would suggest, so you've got I'm gonna walk through everything. So first of all, let me just get rid of any edit which is on this. So let's walk through the panel so that you actually know what everything is. At the top here, it tells you that you have Color Effects Pro number four. And then this little button here just opens and closes that box, so you just leave it open. And then you have a few different views here. So you can split the screen and you can actually move this. So you can split it on the other direction and you can actually slide this red line so you could see the difference while you're making the edits, which is kind of great, or a side-by-side -side comparison, or if you hit the middle button, top and below comparison. Awesome. It then gives you a zoom, so you can zoom into different amounts that it states here by clicking that button, and then you can change the background color. Again, I always suggest using medium gray is fantastic. And then over at the side here, this is what's gonna list all of the filters that you add, and this is where it gets really important. You actually add filters to this and you can layer them on top of each other and let me show you um, how that would work but before I do that I just want to go on this side panel here and explain two things over here what you have once you've added everything over here you can save them all and then you can add them to your recipes now if you click on recipes down here it brings up a load of recipes these are some examples of recipes you can even download them from different places online and you can click on these and what you will see is it will make all of the changes and it will add in this. Personally, I think all of the recipes that come with Nick's um, software are terrible. So I wouldn't use any of them personally, but that's just me. They all have this funny glow thing going on. So <clears throat> that anyway, that's just that. And then you have, um, so I was under all, but if you go back, you have the custom ones that you've created and imported, then you can add to favorites. Anyway. That's an overview of it, but now I'm gonna explain how to actually use the software and it's gonna make things a lot clearer. So, let's come back to the main element, which is your Color Effects Pro. 
Now, often when it loads in, it may load in with some kind of, a, of an effect on here. So that's one of these presets and they're categoried under landscape, favorites, nature, portrait, wedding, architecture, and travel. So for example, this is a portraiture shot, I guess. Click on this and then it gives me all of these selections. So I can select, say, classical soft focus. And if you look over to this side here, that includes, so if we look at this, it includes one, two, three different filters that they're called on top which is kind of amazing. Or I can select, say, Bleach by Bypass, and that also has three filters, but they're kind of different. And then I could have a Skylight filter, which is another three up here that you can see. So that's your portrait. But if I go into Travel, I might click on Film Effects Faded, click on that one, and you see now it's completely different um, filters that it's added down the side. And as you go through all of these, these are essentially loads and loads of different versions of it. Now, one thing I must point out is this side section here. Each one of these has multiple versions. If you click on this, it's gonna open a new drawer with a few different versions that you might want to click through that you could see what you like. So again, if we go in for architecture, we'll go for brilliance and warmth, click on this little thing here, and then it gives us six different variants of this. So these are just one click, pre quick presets that change an image dramatically. But remember, they don't always have the greatest effect, so you might want to tweak things. So one other thing to point out is you can add any of these to your favorites by hitting a star. So for example, if we go, we like graduated filters, <laughs> which is kind of funny with this image, but let's go with this one just here. Say we really like this, all we have to do is, uh, can't remember, it was this one, you hit star. And now when you go to favorites, you're gonna see graduated filters in there to remove it, hit star and it's gone. But it will always stay wherever it was here. Now, this is now the most important thing that we've got the overview done, is let's, for example, go into a by color. No, let's not, let's go into um, portrait dynamic skin softener, for example. Here we are, this is the one that we're gonna select. We're gonna look at the draw, we're gonna say, select the second one, third, yeah, the first one actually we'll go with, looks great. And then what we can do is we can now make some option changes up here and go, okay, what we're now going to do is say, I wanna bring the brightness back a little bit on the whole image, and I'm gonna bring back this glow that it adds on all the way to zero, I just don't want it. I'm gonna add a vignette to this, and I'm gonna change my film type and it gives you numbers. And as you scroll through, it gives you, it shows you how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna go for number three, just so that we have some real dramatic effects. And I want to say, if I want my, my effect, my film type to affect my shadows and my highlights differently. Okay, so let's just add it in there. Say I'm happy with this. Now let's have a look at the before and after. So I can click, click on the compare, which flicks in between. Now I can also click on one of these, and remember what I said, I can drag this so I can actually see how it looks, which is kind of a cool little feature, or turn it to be side by side. Great, so kind of I like this, but what I want to look at, so I'm gonna leave uh, most of this so I can see it, but I can see the main color tone difference, is for example, my darker and lighter and center, I can go, I want to lighten the outside a little bit more, Great, I like this, and I'm gonna change my center size to be down a little bit. So say, say I'm happy with this and I really like it. But what if something's missing? Well, I can now add another filter to this. So to do that, I come over here, I click back, and I go to all. And that's gonna bring up all of these different options just like this. Now what I do is I hit add filter, and that's gonna bring up this new box here. And now I can essentially go in and select one of these. So I can go, I actually want to add in film grain to this. So I click on the film grain, I can open the drawer and it gives me options, and it's gonna give me little previews. So I'll go, you know, I'm gonna go for number three, and you see it's now added this over this side. So let's zoom in to this image so we can really have a close look at the grain. So it's added a massive amount of grain, and let's add this line across here. So way too much, so I can go, you know what? I want to have only a little bit of grain like this is a little bit better, and I am gonna soften the image and so soften the pixels a little bit, but I'm gonna add some contrast 
okay, to the film effects of that. And now I think that looks great. So we come out, and now again we can look at the before and the after. And now I say I really like this. This is fantastic. But, so say we really like this. I can now hit save recipe, and I'll have this for, I'll call this test, because it's purple, test purple. And then I hit OK. Now what's really great is this now comes inside my own recipes. And if I go back here, it comes under custom, and now I have this. So any image that I load up, I can click on this and it will just add this effect. So massively, massively powerful. Now, the other thing that is vitally important that I point out is you could reset everything by hitting X on all these and essentially we get rid of all of these. And then you can build your effects from scratch, which is, Fantastic. So for example, I can come down here and go, well, I want to add, I don't know what Monday morning, definitely not that, I hate it. <laughs> um, but we're gonna go for, I don't know, photo stylizer. Let's go for this one. So say we really like this. Let's come across here and let's look at our options. And oh, actually I can see straight away, I like very tone number six. I like this. So you can see we've got some kind of a light leak that's come in here, but it's made his skin tone really pink. So what I can do here, and this is really the power of this, is I can now add a control point. So I've done this in my other tutorials, but I'll go over it again here because it's important. So I add a con control point, which boosts it even more the effect or reduces the effect. So I'm gonna add a control point with a minus next to it. So that's gonna reduce this effect. I'm gonna click on his skin tones, okay? And what this actually does is it, wherever this circle is here, it looks for something which is now in the larger circle with similar tones. So that's his skin tones, it's only gonna find those. And what I'm gonna select is bring back the opacity of the effect to zero. And what I can see just by adding that, and I can click on this, it'll show me, so this is down on the side here, click the little circle, it's gonna show me my mask effect. Anywhere it's dark, because I hit the minus, it's gonna be taking it away. So I really like that, that looks great. But what if I then want to boost the effect, say on all of his, uh, on the background, let's do all the background. So I add a plus and now I click on here and then what I can do is I can make this larger. Now selecting on this, I can say, you see where it's gone white now? That means that the effect happens even more in that area. So we'll have one here then I'll do one up here as well. So if I hit Option or Alt on a PC and drag it, what that does is duplicate it. So then we're gonna duplicate that over there. Really happy with it. So now we've got two extra ones here, but I don't want to have to affect both of these separately. So instead I hold down Shift, click both of them like so. And what I can actually do is click this little button here, which is group them. So now when I affect this one, so I boost it to 100 or I can pull it all the way back, it's actually going to affect both of these points, which is really powerful. And if I click on the mask, now it will show me both of the masks of these points. So you can see how powerful these control points are. And I can now go through and go, you know what, I'm gonna go for style number not um, six. That's what we were before actually, so we'll go we'll see what seven is. And you can see what it's done. It's actually it's boosted it in the top section and it's reduced it on his face because that's what I requested it to do. So for example, I'm gonna select this one and now I'm actually, I'm gonna duplicate it by option and clicking on his clothes. Because what I'm actually going to want to do is attempt to turn this down on the clothing but keep it really well lit in the sky. And you can see essentially what I've done and all I'm doing is duplicating all of these by holding shift as I move them. And you can see, now I've essentially affected the background with the effect and the inside, I've actually got rid, it, rid of it on his skin tones. So now if we look at the before and the after, the main change is in the background, yet in the lower half, we don't see it at all. And again, if I really liked this, all I'd have to do is save recipe. Or what I could do instead is add yet another filter and then I could come back to my filters and I can go, I wanna add duplex. Or I, if I don't want duplex, because I've still got this one selected, I can then go by color filters and it changes this one. Contrast only, let's do this one. So I'm gonna come in here and I'll select the light and contrast. And I love this. 
and then I can go in and make any changes and I can change my contrast only, uh, bring down my soft contrast. In fact, I'm gonna boost the contrast and bring the brightness down. Oh, so this now looks great. But I want it to mainly affect the background. So again, same thing. I hit a minus control point, add it to his skin, and then you see his skin tones just came bouncing back in there. And then I will option and I'll click on his suit. And then I'll go to the suit the other side. And you can see by doing this, again, I'm only affecting the areas that I want to be affected. Control points always drops down. You always add them to remove them. You select a control point and hit delete, or you select a control point and you hit delete over here. So now I have two different things added. So again, I can now come out of this really easily and I can select another one and have a vignette filter and now it's added a vignette. And then I can go, that looks great. I hate it, but for example, then I'd have add another one, I'll hit old photo. Okay, let's definitely not have that one, uh, but let's have ink. So we're gonna affect ink now is really great. So now I've added one, two, three different ones to this and I can add another filter and I can go high key, great. And then I can add another filter and I can hit pastel and it's just gonna keep on layering these filters up and up and up for as much as I want it to really. And then at any point I can come in and I can go, you know what, I want to delete that one, or not delete it, just hide it for now so I can see how it's affecting. But for example, what's really great is, maybe I've gone through all of this and I've gone way too far. I can come down to the bottom corner, hit history, and it's got all of the history that I have. So this is where we are now, but I can go, you know what, I wanna come all the way back to the beginning, up to the black and white conversion, whatever. And then it's gonna basically go through, delete all the other ones, and just take me back to this section. Or I can go, you know what, I liked it at this stage, or I liked it, at this stage. Or you could go, you know what? I don't like all these things that I've done, you know, because I got it to this place and it was really weird. So instead I go to recipes and I go to custom and I have this one. I click on it. Do you want to replace everything? Yes. And it will automatically load this one that I have here. And what's amazing, I can hit okay, save this, and it's now gonna save it into Photoshop where now I can just have it as a layer mask. So now I can add this on top of, say, a different layer within Photoshop, which is quite amazing. And on top of this, now this is loaded, you see, it's a smart filter. So I can just turn it on and off, or I can mask it. So for example, let's take it off his skin. I'm gonna select the, the brush tool, and I'm gonna go for black, and essentially, just, I've got it set to 22%, that's why. I can just paint it off his skin. Okay, I could paint it off all of him. So it's now just around him. But you can see that's a layer mask. So that is how to use Color Effects Pro 4 in Lightroom and Photoshop. It is amazingly powerful, but there is so much going on. So what I would recommend is going through each of those items in the left-hand panel and having a play with them. See what you really think about it and how they work and interact with your images. And remember, Always save your recipes so that it speeds things up in the future. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune.